hello and welcome back to another Mike Arnold podcast. Today with we are with uh, Jillian Shazby and uh, she is the Director of Publication for the Journal of Neurosurgery here in Charlottesville. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, I'm happy to sit down with Jillian. Uh, it's been, shoot, I've known her for 20 years, uh, coming up next week. Uh, and full disclosure, I used to work at the Journal of Neurosurgery many moons ago. Uh, so it's, it's good to hear um, how things have changed and for the better since I've left. <laughs> Jillian, talk to me a little bit about the Journal of Neurosurgery. What, where, does, where is it founded? What do you do? Uh, the Journal of Neurosurgery, and we, we are actually, I guess technically the company is the Journal of Neurosurgery Publishing Group, which is a subsidiary of the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, which is a uh, professional society. The society is located in Chicago, primarily, and our office has been here, oh gosh, since I think 93-ish. Um, and we are the, the scientific publications of the association. And so we are six, six journals now. Um, our flagship journal, the Journal of Neurosurgery, has been published since 1944. And it is one of the top uh, neurosurgical journals peer-reviewed neurosurgical journals in the world, which we are quite proud of. <laughs> so what's the, what brought this journal to Charlottesville? I mean, we, um, where was it prior? Prior, it was published and the editorial office was actually at Dartmouth College um, in New Hampshire. The editor was, at that time, the editor-in-chief was in Minnesota. Um, and when the EIC change occurred, John Jane Sr., who was here at UVA, became editor and chose to move the editorial office to Charlottesville, and that's what brought it here. So with regard to peer-reviewed journals, what is unique about the Journal of Neurosurgery Publishing Group? What do they do different that than, say, science or nature? Uh, a few things. We are self-published, which means that we are not um, part of a commercial large publisher like an Elsevier or Lippincott, Williams Wilkins. Um, we, we do it ourselves, which is, I think we might be the only neurosurgical journal that is self-published completely. Um, there are fewer and fewer science technology medical journals that are published by them on their own. Um, it means that we are basically carrying the publication process from submission through peer review through production to publishing. And we do have some partners along the way, but we have a staff of 21, I believe, that does every step other than actually print or electronically publish host of the journals. And so with that, I imagine we've got to have some pretty, um, particularly if you're doing editing and, and the layout, you've got to have folks that have either some history in publishing or or do you do a lot of on-the-job training? What's, what's easiest for you guys? Uh, a little of both. Um, because there are so few self-published operations, the majority of the, I guess, the heavy lifting is now occurring overseas. And so there are companies who are America-based or, you know, something, but the majority of their staffing, especially from a production, copy editing standpoint, they'll be overseas. Sure. Um, and so certain skill sets are easy to find here. Um, certain skill sets, especially in production, are not because the majority of people who are learning the programs that you use for projection are more in a graphic design field. They're not in a in a true production field. So from a production perspective, which is where I started, um, we're all pretty much self-trained, um, which is good and <laughs> I guess bad just because there is a ramp up, but now there's a lot more, um, I mean, there's, there's blogs, there's, there's a lot more availability of like, here's a, a trick to create a workflow process. And we have, um, your wife, for example, who is a phenomenal, uh, 
strategic and sort of project management brain. And then we have another employee, Laura, um, I'm not going to name last names, <laughs> uh, who is really knowledgeable about InDesign and has, and our other staff, I mean, there's things that we have figured out how to do because we needed to figure out a way to do them. And sure. that, that flexibility is, I think, really useful because it also means we can figure out a new way to do it on the fly. We're not stuck in sort of a off the shelf, this is how you have to fit into the system. We figure out our own system. So I'm gonna, um, two kind of pathway questions for you. The first is just briefly, Talk to me about why the peer review system of the journal is different than other peer review journals, and then we'll come back to you and how you got to the journal. Sure. Um, the main difference from a peer review perspective is, um, and peer review in this case is always done by the professional peers, not by staff. Um, so neurosurgeons, neuroscientists. Okay. Yes. So a lot of journals will have a very large kind of database of professionals in the field that they will request a review from and that person can choose to review or not. We have a dedicated review board, a set number of people that serve for a set period of time and they agree to review whenever we ask them to. Um, so it's more we're telling them they need to bring the review. Um, and so their workload for us is quite large. Um, we have expanded the editorial board over the last few years significantly to help with that, but it is a it, it is another sort of boot camp experience for them, which I think when they're in the midst of it is sort of overwhelming, but when they finish, they kind of don't want to leave. Um, the other big difference is we do consecutive review rather than concurrent review. Mm -hmm. um, so each reviewer will then see the review previously and they can add or disagree and then we get to a chair who kind of looks at all the reviews, makes a recommendation for either you know reject, accept, or revision and then that goes to our editor-in-chief and our editor-in-chief is reviewing everything as well. So it, it's exceedingly thorough. We give very, uh, very involved feedback, regardless of whether it's rejected or accepted, which is also beneficial to the authors because they can then take that information to improve their paper to go somewhere else. Do you see if, if reviewers maybe have personal um, angst with a, with a position that they can be competitive when they're doing a review or is it I think that there's a pretty lot well of, scholarly yeah there I mean there's a lot of kind of professional honor isn't the right word but I'm gonna use it uh, where I mean you you can have a beef but you have to set that aside and think about the good of science and if you do have a beef you should say personally I feel this academically, scientifically, there's not a problem here. And so I'm just gonna say that. Um, and then there's checks and balances where if you do have any sort of, you know, conflicts of interest, you have to, you know, recuse yourself from reviewing that paper. And we have some things built in, like no reviewer can review something from their institution. Um, just as a basic thing, they don't even have to say, hey, I can't do this, right. we don't option. send it to them. Um, but yeah, if there is a conflict of interest that, that we have reviewers wheel shifted around to, to avoid any confusion there. Okay. So what brought you to the journal? So it's been in Charlottesville since 93. Did you grow up in Charlottesville? I did grow up in Charlottesville. So how did you find your way to the journal? Um, I first got into working for publishing in 92, 93. Um, no. You're not okay. tested on this. It's okay. This, right? <laughs> <laughs> we probably won't because it's it's real and that's what we uh, want. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm having to actually think about dates. So I studied psychology in school, um, but my first job after school in an emotionally disturbed school was wonderful, but realized I don't have 
the capacity to do that and be a parent. And mm-hmm. being a parent was very important. So I um, went to work for a toxicology consulting company in, in Charlottesville, um, where I started to do quality assurance and editing and really enjoyed that. Fast forward, had two children, decided to go back to work full time um, and got a job at a local publishing company and um, started learning how to do production work. Um, About a year into that, made the move to the Journal of Neurosurgery in 99 and have been there ever since. Um, It's tough to leave. I know that. Yeah, it's been 20, <laughs> they're in for life. <laughs> Twenty-three years in January. Twenty-four years in January. And I would say, from from my memory and, and from what I know from my life, I mean, when you start there, there's not a lot of turnover. The, it's very low turnover. And I think having a group of introverts, which you have to be to be in editing and publishing, um, particularly for the copy editors and editors. They're in, so it's a, it's always a good thing it's, and interesting. Yeah, and for sure. probably your psychology comes out just fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I do use it a lot more than I expected to. Um, it, it's a, I mean, it's I think it's a wonderful place to work. You have a lot of autonomy. Um, there's a lot of room for growth. The science is fascinating, um, and you feel like you're actually helping people so move it's, forward yeah it's pretty pretty awesome so what do you want to do when you were five when i was five yeah what was kind I of the first thing you wanted to do to oh, gosh five i think when i was five i wanted to go live in a tree um <laughs> that, that was definitely my dream was kind of a swiss family robinson button there you go kind of thing when i was five there you go <laughs> <laughs> So you mentioned you had uh, you've had two children, but there's three in in, three, in full, yes. and you're you're married happily, I presume. And and uh, I'm nodding how, yes. <laughs> how did you and your husband meet? Uh, we met at UVA um, a month before I graduated. He was a year behind me, and um, I think we were both pretty sure within about a week <laughs> that, that this was the right person. Um, and it was funny realizing after how many people we knew in common and we had never met, um, and we met sort of completely serendipitously. So it was a very lucky thing. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And, um, grandchildren and one grandchild who will be two at the end of September. So so. spoiled rotten, I presume. Yes. (laughs) Yes. She's phenomenal. What uh, what do you do for fun? I know you're in the middle of remodeling, so that's exciting. Yes, um, I do probably mostly reading <laughs> is my absolutely favorite activity, but I uh, like to do lots of walks with the, the pup um, and yeah, working on getting this house into a livable space. <laughs> so let's say we threw, I don't know, half a billion dollars at you because you won the the lottery. Would you do anything different? Would you stay at the journal? Would you blow this house up and put a new one in its spot? I think I would definitely stay at the journal for a while. Um, But what would be really fun is to set up, I'd like to set up a foundation to do things like this, like get a house in disrepair, put it back into a livable, space um for just anybody who needed it Mm -hmm. just we obviously have a problem in this area in particular with affordable housing the prices are insane and then you know if you are spending that much money for a house how are you possibly going to make it livable and we're pushing out people who are necessary for our community to hold roles that need to be held and they can't live here so that would be awesome one of the more thoughtful answers that i've gotten for that <laughs> question <laughs> most of us are like i'm gonna build a moat and a wall and we're gonna be ourselves um so the next kind of silly interview question which you can steal the next time you interview somebody 
if you if you could get rid of one of the U.S. states, which one would you get rid of? <laughs> My goodness. I mean, does everyone say Florida? No, most say California, actually. Well, I'm, I mean, California may not have a choice if <laughs> climate change keeps happening, but I think based on current events, I would have to say Florida right now. Sorry, Florida people. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. Um... So, with regard to the journal, it's not as though somebody can come upon it anymore. There's no building. There's no, there's no rented space. What do you guys do? I mean, with 21 folks, how many are local? Do you have remote? We are now fully virtual office. Um, we had an office in Charlottesville, happily, I guess, for this transition. We didn't have walk-ins we had very few visitors um and so though it was you know nice having an office space and everyone together publishing is such that charlottesville is not a hotbed of publishing offices so again recruiting was difficult um so our last i think five hires were remote first hires um when covid Hit, we had to immediately shut the office. We had been sort of working philosophically towards a, a virtual work environment, but that was more on a kind of a philosophical mindset. We had to overnight go virtual, which um, happily really didn't take that much effort. Um, and so for two years, I think, you know, a couple people were going into the office now and then, but the vast majority of people never step foot in the office. Um, and that's a massive expense, um, sure. that we didn't need to, to keep. And so we went to hundred percent virtual. I think the office space was completely dismantled by the end of May. Um, but we've been acting that way for almost two years prior so it seems to be going well so when i worked at the journal there was another uh executive director keller at the time and i remember one of the things that she sat me down she said don't use the term vast majority do, oh, yeah. do you remember that was one of her pet peeves i was like and so when i hear it that's immediately what i think of um well in our case it's truly the vast majority <laughs> it's, it's just for sure <laughs> um how do people, if they want to see the work you do, how, you know, other than going to an academic institution, how can they kind of see the, the work you do? And, you could and go well. on our website. We are at thejns, T-H-E-J-N-S dot org. Um, and we have two, three completely freely readable journals. Um, and then three that are behind a publication wall. But after the first year, we open them up for five years um, for anyone to read. And if you want to read about neurosurgery, go check it out. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I thank you so much for your time. Well, thank, thank you. you. This was fun. <laughs> <laughs>